How's it going guys, you're watching Rowdy XOC and this is episode three in my water cooling guide. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about water pumps, so if this is something you are fresh in the market for, stick around and hopefully we can help you out. Okay, so jumping straight into it, this conversation is centered around two pumps, which is the DDC and the D5. Um, now there are other pumps on the market, um, Alpha Cool, uh, Aqua Computer, XSPC, they do uh, their own line of pumps, but they're very specific. So the chances are if you're new into water cooling, you're probably gonna be looking at either the D5 or the DDC. Now my plan is to go through the specifications of both types of pumps, the pros, the cons, and how they work. And then obviously we'll have a discussion about which one is probably gonna be best for different types of build. So I'll try and tailor it to, to help most circumstances. Um, and yeah, I'll go through my favorite pump that I use uh, later on in the video, why it's my favorite pump. So yeah, let's jump straight into that. Right, so this is the D5 pump. Now this specific one is an EK pump, but what you will find is there are many manufacturers that actually offer the D5. Um, but ultimately, the only differences between any of the brands is the tops they come with. Um, the pump itself, so the Naked Pump, they are made by a company called Laying, and they are the same across the board. So there's no difference in quality depending on brands as far as it goes for the pump itself. It will just be down to the, the pump top. And obviously, they all look a little bit different, um, and everyone's got their own design, but ultimately, they're all the same pump. Now, the good thing about these pumps is the way they work. So they're really quite smart and very reliable. So they have an electromagnetic motor and they rely on centrifugal force to lubricate the pump. Now, basically the way that that works is, as you can see, the impeller is quite hard to get out, but that's because it's magnetic. Um, and as you can see, there's a bowl in here um, with a small ceramic bearing. Now, the way that it works is when the pump, well, the impeller, sorry, is spinning, that will uh, be buffered by a thin layer of coolant around the bowl and then that actually lubricates the pump um, and it also at the same time cools the pump down. Now that's one of the key differences between the D5 and the DDC as these are cooled solely off water. So they use the water to cool it down, down to its mass. Uh, the, DDC, the DDC requires uh, water and air and that's one of its drawbacks but we'll get more into that when we go through the DDC pump. Um, so specifications of these, you can buy these in different variants. Um, the most common one is PWM, most people are using that these days. Um, but you can buy just a straight D5, which runs at one speed, um, which is normally full speed. Um, you can get the Vario, which is what this model is, which is where you can manually tune the speed on the back and you just turn that to whichever setting you want, whatever speed, and then it will just remain at that speed until you physically change it. The PWM, you can control the speed um, within your software, so we'll for control or your motherboard, you can do that sort of uh, through the computer itself. So PWM is the most common one you'll find, um, but uh, there are still quite a few of the uh, Varios kicking about. And I can't remember the last time I've actually seen just a straight bog standard D5. Um, but yeah, PWM is, is normally the number one choice. Now, they come with various different connectors. As you can see, this one doesn't have a connector at all, but normally they would come with either a SATA or a Molex, most commonly Molex, um, and then obviously a Levin external. If it's PWM, a Levin external header for the PWM support. Um, now, the specifications that these come in is they have, I believe it is 3.9 meters of head pressure, and they'll move it to 1500 liters per hour, which out of a small pump like this is a large amount of water or coolant that this can move. Um, these are that strong and reliable, they are considered uh, server grade pumps, so these can be used for industrial applications as well. So really good pump, really, really reliable. Um, main drawback to the D5, in my opinion, is just its size. So obviously, depending on the system that you're trying to water cool um, and the chassis, obviously getting a D5 in there can be quite challenging, but we'll go through different options and applications that can make life a little bit easier for a more efficient sort of uh, way to fit them into your system. Okay, so moving on to the D5's little brother, this is the DDC. Um, now, as you can see, size comparison wise, in comparison to the D5, it's virtually half the size, which is one of its biggest benefits over the D5. Now, with that big benefit also comes a massive drawback, um, and that is down to the cooling of the pump. So, whereas the D5 relies solely on the coolant to keep the pump cool, and it does that very efficiently, the DDC does not do so well purely because of its size. So. Although it will use a marginal amount of the um, cooling generated from the coolant to keep the pump cool, it will rely heavily on airflow. 
Um, when these first came out, one of the biggest problems they had was not a lot of people knew that they needed airflow. So they were being put in places that got very little airflow. Um, and over time they were getting too hot and ultimately failing. And I will tell you from experience, one of the biggest types of failures you can get in water cooling is either a leak, which is generally quite unlikely, or pump failure. Um, now, if you get pump failure, your temperatures will skyrocket very, very quickly um, and ultimately lead to the PC shutting itself down for its own safety protocols. Now, that's all well and good. That will save the hardware, but it doesn't do it any good um, and obviously ultimately reduces the life of the hardware. So reliability and keeping everything efficiently cooled is very important. And it's for that reason I don't actually use these as I don't like taking the risk. Whereas I've been quite lucky, like most of the builds that I do, um, D5 has always been sort of um, feasible to use whereas in some applications you will be forced to use a DDC but if you are forced to use one just make sure you have very good air cooling around the pump um, there is heat sinks that you can use to put on the back um, and that will help with aiding the air cooling um, so there is some sort of methods out there to help with that but ultimately there uh, th th it's always a compromise so if you can use D5 just use D5. Do you know what I mean if you can if you can afford it and you've got the room for it, use D5 because you're going to be sorted. Um, if you have to use DDC, like I said, for the how much that heatsink costs, just buy the heatsink and then try and make sure you're positioning this in a place where it gets very very good airflow and you should be okay. Um, now, like the D5, it uses electromagnetic motor um, and centrifugal force to lubricate. And moving on to that subject just briefly again. That centrifugal force um, and the way that it lubricates is also the reason that you can't let these pumps run dry um, because obviously it uses the, uh, it's lubricated by the coolant itself. If that runs dry of coolant, then that pump or the D5, DDC or the D5, um, will destroy themselves very, very quickly or at the very least re reduce the longevity of the motor. So do make sure when you're bleeding your systems that you, when you put your first sort of batch of coolant in that the pump has been primed um, before you turn the system on and then obviously when you when you see the coolant coming down in the reservoir just make sure that you turn it off in good time to make sure the pumps do not run dry because that's how they fail when, when whenever you hear people saying never let these run dry that is the reason why um, but the d5 for its size is actually a very impressive pump i'm like they've uh, they've actually got generally a higher head pressure than the d5 the flow rate is quite a bit reduced. Um, I think there's about four or five different models. I don't know them all off the top of my head, but I know the lowest is normally around uh, anywhere from 3.7 head, um, 3.7 meters of head pressure up to 4.9. Um, but the flow rates are dramatically reduced. So I think it's the the flow rate is around 420 liters on the lower specs, up to 522. But there is drawbacks between them all. So. Ultimately, it will just depend on whichever pump you're looking at. And if you read the specifications, it will tell you specifically what that pump will do. Um, but in all honesty, as a little tip, if you're in an ITX build and you're using just sort of one rad, it doesn't matter which one of these you're buying, it's gonna do the job. So don't get lost in the world of specifications. Um, if you're a proper numbers cruncher and you want the absolute best efficiency, then obviously you're gonna to need to kind of work out what kind of resistance you're gonna have in the loop versus what pump you would want to most optimally and efficiently run that loop. Um, but generally speaking, you don't need to worry about it too much. And that does go for the D5 as well. The only time you need to worry majorly about specifications if you're doing a really elaborate build with lots of radiators and if you've got various water blocks, so if you're doing GPU, CPU, VRM, chipset, um, and you've got various different bends and a load of radiators, then you need to pay attention to what power you're putting through there. Um, but most people just end up using dual D5. So yeah, I stick by it. D5 if you can do it, DDC if you have to, um, but just bear in mind, like I said, with the cooling tips to keep these good. Um, power wise, they generally come with a fan header as opposed to Molex or SATA, and it's just done straight off the motherboard or whatever controller you're using. So that is the D5, how it works and the specifications, and obviously we've gone through the D, uh, sorry, this is the D DDC specifications, um, and we've gone through the D5 as well. Now, I've kind of answered the question already, which one should you choose and why would you choose it? D5 all day long for its reliability. Uh, DDC, if you are struck on space, then obviously this is the alternative that you will have to go for. But if you can, go with the D5. Um, specifications wise, like I said, providing you're not running a stupid amount of radiators and a really, really crazy system, you will get away. You know, if you're using two rads, and 
<laughs> that doesn't do the pumps very good either. Um, if you if you're using uh, sort of two rads, D5 will normally do it. Um, and then, like I said, DDC is normally good for one, maybe two radiators, but on a, a nice, simple loop. So, um, in all honesty, if you're using two rads, go D5. Just try your best to go D5. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much specifications down. Um, now, the way I was talking about these with optimizing space is, generally speaking, both these pumps will come with a top. So they'll either come with a top where you can use as a standalone units, or you can cut, sort of combine them with reservoirs. Now, I've got both a D5 and DDC. I don't have any standalone tops, um, but this is the best example for space. So if you don't have the room for a DDC to sit on its own somewhere, then obviously you can buy this sort of combination. It has another part that comes underneath it, which obviously grips it. Um, but uh, as you can see, the, the D5 is attached to the reservoir itself. Um, there's so many different types of these about with a smaller footprint than even this. Obviously this is quite an old and bulky one now, um, but they do quite sort of nice slimmer versions. Um, and then in the EK Quantum Kinetic range, like I said, you can get them with the more of a distro plate style. So they've got like a much sort of lower profile um, and the D5 just goes in the back. So there is options like this if you're limited on space. So if you can't have sort of, you know, a pump and a reservoir, but you can get both, you know, generally speaking, this can save you bacon and actually allow you to get a D5 in your system fairly well. But the same does go for the DDC. So exactly the same as the D5. That'd be with the sort of pump top. And uh, like I said, you've got it all in one place. So, um, but as you can see, still in comparison, the, uh, I'm trying not to drop it again. Um, there's quite a difference in the footprint. So yeah, DDC, it does have its benefits, but it's not a bit of me, but uh, that's for, for you to decide. You've been warned, <laughs> but like I said, keep, keep going while you're okay. So that is pretty much it when it comes to the two most common pumps on the market, which is the DDC and the D5. Um, actually, they've both got pros, they've both got cons, but ultimately, if you just want a good, reliable pump, just go with the D5. Um, like I said, if you're absolutely stuck with space, the DDC, it can still be a good pump, you just got to make sure that you have very good airflow. And like I said, use that heatsink mod and you should be good to go. So yeah, hopefully that has covered most of what we need to go through regarding this matter. Um, if I have missed anything or if I've confused you or you need sort of uh, further explanations, do feel free to let me know down in the comments below um, and I can elaborate. Um, but generally speaking, that's the bulk of what you need to know. So you should be, uh, it should definitely help your, your buying experience to some degree. So yeah, if the video was helpful to you, please do subscribe and like the video. Um, and like I said, this is part of a series. So this was episode three. So far we've covered radiators, we've covered water blocks. Um, we've still got a few other components to go. So yeah, if you're finding these videos helpful, like I say, do check us a subscribe, like the video and uh, yeah, any questions, just let me know down below. So as always, thanks so much for watching guys and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.